This video is ideal for anyone who wants a detailed look at how to use the retirement forecaster that's built into Aviva's My Workplace. It will also show you how to add in other pensions or retirement savings so you can get a complete picture. My Workplace's retirement forecaster takes into account what you've already saved and makes a forecast based on this plus your current contribution rate and estimated future investment growth. However, it won't know about other pensions or retirement savings that you have, including any other entitlements that you have from your employment with Rolls-Royce. It will show you how to add them in, as well as the state pension, so you can get a complete picture. We'll also look at how you can make changes to your forecast and see the impact of doing so. The retirement forecaster is easy to find in my workplace. After logging in, click on details to get into your account. If you have more than one account, we recommend using your active account, as this already knows the current contributions that you and the company are paying. Next, click on overview, then scroll down to the future of your pension to get started. If you're using the app, the navigation is slightly different. Log in and tap on workplace retirement account, making sure that if you have more than one account, that you use the active one. Then, from the Manage tab, tap on the future of your pension. If you're a member of the Rolls-Royce UK Pension Fund, this slide shows you how to get the right figure to enter into the Retirement Forecaster. By doing this and adding any other retirement savings, your forecast will show it all in one place. Log in to the member website and head to the Get an Estimate page before getting a retirement forecast. It's best to enter this figure from your estimate as it's the current annual value of your deferred pension before any reductions for early retirement. Remember to use your own figure and not the one that's showing on this video. So I'll just click into view pension forecast. So here we've just landed in our test account um, and don't worry too much about the figures you see on here because uh, it is a test account. So first of all, it starts off uh, by showing you that this person is currently got their retirement age set to 63. Um, yours may be different, obviously. The investment risk is in line with where they're currently invested at the moment. When we go into this in a little bit uh, more detail, you'll be able to change that if you should wish. And this person's currently paying the amount you can see on screen there in as their monthly payment at the moment. That includes the company's contribution as well. Um, so without further ado, let's click on the calculate forecast button and we will actually see some figures here. So if we just come up here, we can see this is the person's forecast. Now this is for their Rolls-Royce Retirement Savings Trust active fund only. So with the fund value they've already got, and what they're paying in currently a month, and if they go all the way through to 63, then Aviva think that the pension will probably be worth somewhere between 27,600 and 34,800 a year, and the middle value of 31,000. Now, when you're using this, all these little info buttons will, you can click on and they will pop up little bits of information for you. So we're looking at the moment, just today on the option of someone buying a guaranteed income for life. You'll see that referred to as an annuity. Even I might use the word occasionally. It's just a piece of pensions jargon uh, that basically means an income. So just the same as your wages, really. Uh, and those are the assumptions they've used there. Again, have a look at those in your own time. Uh, so if we come down, first of all, we'll see this your retirement lifestyle. So that, that's we've dealt with the pension there. Let's start. I'll come back to your target in a minute, but we'll start with the overview. Now, just before we did this in the presentation, you'll know that I talked about the retirement living standards uh, from the PLSA and they're built into this uh, system. You can see them down here on the left hand side of the screen. So you've got the minimum lifestyle there, the moderate lifestyle and the comfortable lifestyle. Now, the observant amongst you might notice that these figures are slightly higher than the PLSA ones uh, that I showed you earlier. That is because the PLSA is talking about income, so it's talking about the actual pounds that you've got in your bank account, in your pocket, uh, so anything that's after tax. What Aviva are doing here is showing you figures that you would need from their uh, annuity or pension before tax. So again, these info buttons, if you just click on them, they will remind you uh, what comfortable uh, retirement standard of living. And so yeah, and then moderate lifestyle there is just showing there. And minimum lifestyle at the bottom 
is showing there. So you can see for this person here, um, and that's just basically plotted that 31,000 figure that we saw at the top of the screen, the middle of the road figure, um, says that's what they're gonna get at 63, and plots them against the, life, uh, the, the living standards. So we can see comfortable, it's not happening at the moment there for this person. Uh, the moderate lifestyle, they're not a million miles off there, and they're well above the minimum uh, lifestyle. Uh, requirements there. So if we just click on the details tab while we're here, we can see that's kind of shown with a little bit more explanation um, where this person is. So it's saying at the, at the 63 retirement for this individual that there's a, a very good chance of uh, reaching the minimum uh, retirement living standard of 14,800 a year. Uh, and you can see there, it's not just a good chance, it's probably a, <laughs> a pretty certain chance because the estimate is saying that that person will have between 12 and 19,000 uh, over the minimum retirement living standard. Now again, 12 is when there's been barely any investment growth. 19,900 is when there's been uh, very, very good investment growth. Middle of the road, again, is, is the one that we've looked at uh, before. Uh, coming over to the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that this person also has a fair chance of getting to the moderate uh, retirement living standard, which is uh, 35,983 a year. Um, but they would need some pretty good investment growth to get there. Obviously, as you can see from the, the text in red there, uh, the £1,161 below it if uh, if things went well, and 8300 or so if things did not go so well in terms of investment returns. So that screen just shows you a little bit of extra detail there. Now, finally, we come back to the Your Target screen, which is kind of what it defaults to when you, when you drop into uh, this uh, forecaster. Now, what the target's doing is uh, it's just basically you can set your own target here uh, on the uh, left hand side of the screen. So what I'll do is we'll we'll go and set a target now. This one is set to currently is preset to the uh, minimum retirement income standard. So which is 14,856. And as we saw earlier, uh, this person is going well through uh, that target at the moment. So. I'll just show you what you can do to, to change that. If you click on edit the target, um, now if you really want to, you can sit on this page and you can go through all these different things. So housing costs, utility bills, phone, insurances, car and transport, onwards and onwards, and put in what you think you will actually use uh, or actually need every month. Uh, the easier way to do this uh, to start with is just to select a retirement lifestyle on this link here. So if we click on that one there, we could uh, choose the minimum one, which was already there. We could choose the moderate one in the middle, or we could choose the comfortable. So again, aligned with the retirement living standards that we've uh, talked about earlier in this presentation. So let's click moderate for the sake of argument here, and we will uh, click confirm on that. So that will have changed all these figures that are, are, are in here. You could go through and edit them, but we'll, uh, for today, we'll just uh, carry straight on to the next screen and we'll save and continue right at the bottom. And we go back to a screen we're already familiar with and that's the retirement lifestyle screen there. And we can see that the target is, has been moved up uh, above the level of the pension that this person is going to receive from the Rolls Royce Retirement Savings Trust. And just before we move on, down at the bottom of this screen, uh, we're now going to look at just the uh, pension fund value. So forgetting about buying uh, a pension or an annuity with your money, this is just showing uh, the value of your fund in, in, in pounds, basically. So like it's a big, uh, big pot of money, basically. So Again, the same thing. Um, they're estimating if a person carries on paying at the same rate that uh, the fund value at 63 is going to be somewhere between those two figures, 458,000 and 551,000. And then you can see below the usual uh, things have not gone so well, 370,000. Things have gone fantastically, 671,000 there. Um, if you like, there's also a fund value graph that we'll be showing here, which is sometimes useful to look at. Um, this is basically showing from the person who is uh, 53 at the moment, going all the way through to 63. And this is the modeling that suggests how things may perform there. As you can see, the solid blue is the most likely to happen. The paler blues are less likely to happen. And that, that, that represents the kind of range that we've just talked about um, before.
So we just hide that one there. And now having seen all of that, we're going to go in and look at exploring, making some changes uh, to the forecast, which includes adding in some old pensions, state pension, and so onwards. So we're going to change some, uh, some things in this forecast to see if we can improve matters uh, for the individual. Uh, there's two ways we do this, basically. There are changes to your uh, current Retirement Savings Trust uh, membership. So we'll have a look at that one first. And then secondly, uh, there's an option to include other pensions into the mix. So if we just click on this one, first of all, we'll see again, this is how this person is set up. They want to retire at 63. Um, we can move that around and we'll do that in a minute. Investment risk is set to be in line with their current investments. You could change that if you wish. Uh, it's not something I personally think is that useful. But if you wanted to say, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just see what happens when it's only low risk. You can do that there if you wish to. Um, this is that person's total monthly payment again. We can change that here. We can just overtype those figures and see how that affects the um, the forecast. And then finally, there is the option to put in a single payment as well. So, so these are all there for you to play around with and anything you do in here isn't gonna affect anything in real life. So don't worry about putting you know 10,000 pounds in there and suddenly thinking it's coming out of your wages next month. That won't happen at all. Um, so having a look at this, let's just see what happens if we change uh, something in this, uh, for example. Let's say this person wants to uh, maybe go a bit earlier. So if we take that down to 63, from 63 to 60, for example, and then all we need to do is just press save and continue, and it should take us straight back to the forecast that we've already seen. Uh, and there it is. Uh, you'll notice that it's uh, gone down a little bit. Usefully, if you look here, just in just in this line that I'm kind of waving my cursor around at the moment, um, that's the previous figure that you saw. That's reality, effectively. That's that's before any changes have been made. So we can see already that this person's estimated retirement income has dropped a little bit. And naturally, that's because they're going to take it three years earlier than they were planning to. So that's three years. Uh, fewer contributions going in and obviously in in terms of assumptions about how long you're going to live three years longer of life so obviously both those things have a little bit of an effect on that and you come down and it's all exactly the same as before we've got our target set uh, we can see the amount is there and obviously it's below target so by making that change we've actually made things slightly worse uh, for this person in terms of reaching their target, but that's understandable because uh, we've made them retire a little bit earlier. Again, pension value has also changed the estimate for that. You can see uh, the original reality version here, 458 to 551, but in the forecast now that's dropped because of the reasons I've already explained there. So we can go back in and see about making some more changes to that. Maybe we'll put that back to uh, where we were before. So just click this reset current values button and that puts you all uh, back in the right place as well. So we'll now go and have a look at including uh, some other pensions into this forecast by clicking on the button there. And there are three things you can do here. Uh, first on the left is you can include your state pension, which uh, for this test case, it's going to start being paid from their 67th birthday. But if we want to include the state pension, it's dead easy. All we want to do is just tick that box. So the green ticks in there and it's ready to go. Now, at this point, if you've got no other pensions anywhere else, you can click that save and continue button and go straight off and have a look at how that's changed your forecast. But what we'll do is we just want to add a couple more things in here just to make things uh, a little bit more interesting. So if we go into the second one, which as I said again is for defined contribution pensions. So that might be a personal pension that you've had in the past. It might be some AVCs that you've uh, that you've saved in the past alongside your uh, defined benefit pension. Could be anything like that, but just generally speaking, it's something that is just in a pension that's kind of a pot of money rather than a defined benefit like uh, the Rolls-Royce UK Pension Fund or, or a lot of kind of uh, state employer pension schemes. So once we're in this screen, all we need to do is put in the name of the pension uh, scheme provider that you've uh, got your pension with and the current pension value into there. So let's just assume uh, we've got uh, um, you know an AVC somewhere with uh, Prudential, for example. 
can spell that correctly. And we'll just say that there's like £20,000. And we'll just add that one in there. And so there's another pension. If you've got, you can put as many in as you like. So basically, if you think you've got another one from another employer or somewhere, so we could just, let's put one in there. Let's put a And just again, have a look at your current pension value. If we click on that info button, it will tell us. Uh, you can get that from your statement or quite often uh, online these days. So let's just say there's another small pension with somebody else that's 10,000 pounds. And we'll add that in as well. So once you've got all of those in there, all you need to do is just press that continue button there. And then you can see on the confirmation screen there that you've added two pensions in. So now we'll look at adding a defined uh, benefit plan to the mix here. So if we just click that one on there, as you can see, I've already put in a Rolls-Royce UK pension fund because that's probably what a lot of you will want to do. And we already discussed earlier in the presentation where you can get the, uh, the figure that you need to put in here. Just to recap on that, basically this system will only put in your um, defined benefit pension from age 65 so not that sophisticated when it comes to that but it's still a reasonable guide and I think that's why we will just look at the, get the figure that's unreduced basically uh, so if you've if you've got a pension statement from anybody or even another defined benefit scheme the figure that you want to put in there is the amount that you've built up in that scheme or even the revalued amount that you've built up is the most accurate one. Don't put in early retirement ones, otherwise it will just skew everything a little bit. Just a slight limitation of this system, really. So we'll say for this person that they're no longer obviously building anything up in the Rolls Royce UK pension fund. But before they uh, finished in that scheme, they had got a pension of £4,000 built up in there. So we'll just add that one in. Uh, just to show exactly what it looks like. So again, we've done that. We'll just press continue. And so now we have everything in there. We've basically got a state pension included. We've got two defined contribution pensions included. And we've also got a defined benefit plan pension included as well. So let's see what happens by pressing save and continue. And we go back to the forecast. And we can see that things have become quite a bit healthier uh, there. So the revised forecast has obviously gone up. Again, just to see just below that in the middle there, you can see the existing current uh, savings trust pension only is shown there. But there's the revised one with the uh, uh, state pension and the defined benefit and the other defined contribution schemes added in. So now if we come down to the chart here, we can see it's become a bit more colourful um, in the retirement lifestyle target uh, chart. So basically now we are looking at uh, these figures here. So just coming down to the chart. So this person's retirement age is still set at 63. So they're just shy of that target that we set, which was based on the moderate uh, retirement income uh, on the on the lifetime uh retirement living standards, sorry. Um, so 34,158 a year. Now when they get to 65, uh, their defined benefit pension of 4,000 pound a year is coming in from the Rolls Royce UK pension fund. So you can see therefore they have finally gone through the target there. And so uh, they've, they've reached the target, so that's all good. And then when they get to 67, because the state pensions come in, they're now actually uh, gone uh, quite nicely through that target now. And you can see uh, the figure there that they're, they're expected to get at that time. So basically at 63, with the changes and all the things that we've added in, it's saying 34,158 a year. When the final salary scheme kicks in, it goes up to 38,158. And when the state pension kicks in, it goes up to just shy of £50,000 a year. And just scrolling a bit further down the page again, we get to the pension fund value section, which has also uh, been updated with those changes that we've made on there. So again, you can pop back in and click on this explore changes, uh, mess about with it to your heart's content, really. It's the best way to to learn how making changes affect things. So like as I've said before, Anything you do in there is not going to affect what you're doing in real life unless you decide to actually go and make those changes. So I would sit in there, tweak things around a little bit, pay, see what happens when you pay a bit more, see what happens when you change your retirement age, all sorts of things like that. If you'd like to learn more, our YouTube channel has further videos to help expand your knowledge. Search Rolls-Royce Pensions on YouTube and choose the Understanding Rolls-Royce Retirement Savings Trust playlist. And if you have any questions, 
head to the GBS Employee Hub to get the answers you need.